This video will look at the difference between linear and exponential functions. So for a scenario, we see that Jane has 100 dolls and each year she buys 15 more versus Jordan who has 100 dolls and each year she buys 10% more. So let's look at Jane first. We wanna write the function that models each scenario. So we're given the initial number of dolls that Jane has, which is 100, and then we're told each year she buys 15 more dolls. Each year she's buying a set number so this is going to be a linear function because it's increasing by a specific quantity. So we could say for Jane, the number of dolls is equal to 15 that she buys each year plus the 100 she started with. Our slope is 15, our initial value was 100. So that's for Jane. Then for Jordan, I'll represent her by D. So she's got a D in her name. Um, Jordan, her function's a little bit different. It says she has 100 dolls, so her initial value is still 100, but each year she buys 10% more. So she's increasing the number of dolls that she has by a specific percentage rather than a specific number. So this is going to be an exponential function. The way we would write this one is we would say that she starts off with 100 dolls, and then each year she adds 10% more. So we're going to be adding... 0.10, which is 10% more, and this is exponential, so it's going to be raised to y for the number of years. So we've got our linear function where we're adding 15 dolls each year versus our exponential function where we're growing by 10% each year. So we want to know how many dolls will each person have after five years and then after 10 years. So let's just make one big chart. So I'm gonna represent the years in my first column then Jane's dolls in the second, and then Jordan's in the third. So let's just look at the first maybe 15 years worth of having dolls. So I'm, there are shortcuts to um, typing in this column, but for now I'm just going to type it in by hand. Don't want to overwhelm y'all with too many Excel tricks in one video. So we've got our year showing um, the number of years from 0 to 15. So we're going to look at the first 15 years worth of having baby dolls. Then for Jane's function, she's buying 15 new dolls each year, and she started off with 100. So I'm typing in this linear function using a cell reference for the number of years. So we've got equals 15 times cell referencing the years plus 100. And then if I click on that, I can drag it down to get the number of dolls that she has each year for the first 15 years. For Jordan, I'm going to put in her equation, she starts off with 100, and then she's adding 10% each year. So we'll put in equals 100 times parenthesis, 1 plus 0.10 close parenthesis. Then to get the caret, which is what we call that little pointy arrow thing, on my keyboard it's shift and then the number 6. Check on your keyboard, it might be different, but I think on most keyboards that you get the caret by hitting shift 6. And then again, I'm still referencing the number of years for Y. So we see they start off with the same number of baby dolls. If I drag this down a couple years, Jane looks like she has more babies. She's got 115 versus 110, 145 versus 133.1. So it looks like Jane has more babies, but as we keep dragging it down, we see even at year eight, Jane has more. But at year nine, all of a sudden, Jordan technically has more baby dolls. Jane has 235, and Jordan now has 235.78. And then Jordan has more at year 10. And if we go all the way down, looks like Jordan has more baby dolls each year from there on out. So it's like Jane adding 15 a year will have more baby dolls up through about year eight. And then come year nine, Jordan has more. And the reason I wanted to make this graph or this chart was so that we could turn it into a graph. So I'm going to highlight all of my data and then insert a scatter plot. And so let's see if it'll let me rename these. Actually, I know a better way. Delete that. Sorry. I'm going to highlight my data, including the labels. I think this will automatically label it. So insert, scatter. There we go. So now it tells us Jane's and Jordan baby dolls. Um, if we change our quick chart layout to layout one, you know, this is our years. This is the number of dolls. Maybe just call this our doll collection. 
So we can see initially they both have 100. Those dots were on top of each other. Then Jane's blue dot is on top. So she's got more up through about year eight, year nine, somewhere in there where they get very close. And then Jordan's on top having more. So Jane's function grows linearly in a straight line. Jordan's function grows exponentially in that curved line. And exponential functions often end up much higher than linear because they have a higher growth rate when you have more people, or in this case, more dolls to work with.